We are now publishing a paper showing it would cost the rest of the UK, particularly English businesses, £500 million if George Osborne uh, succeeded in, in shoving Scotland out of sterling. I, I just don't think that's a credible thing for a Chancellor to say. Listen, I've got a plan which will cost businesses £500 million. I'm calling it the George tax. And I think the George tax is not sellable to the people of England. I think, you know, given that uh, businesses uh, across uh, England and the rest of the UK are hard pressed for all sorts of reasons at the present moment, as we try to get into economic recovery, nobody wants to see a George tax of £500 million. So why on earth should the Chancellor propose it? In any rate, I, I think that's an unsellable proposition for the Chancellor to take to the people next year. And that's why one of the reasons, just one of a number, uh, why I think the people of Scotland are rightly assessing that George Osborne is bluffing. Our position is we should share a currency and therefore there's no transaction costs uh, and none of the £500, 500 million pound bill. It's the Chancellor's position that he's threatening to not allow Scotland to, to be part of a sterling area, to say it's our currency and we're hanging on to it, uh, not to share sterling. It's his threat of £500 million. It's one of the reasons, transaction costs both ways, that we say a, a, a currency union, a sterling union, sharing the pound is a, a great idea. The threat all comes from George Osborne. Now, the point is, now, last week he was trying to threaten Scotland, and there's been a huge reaction against that sort of diktat from on high among the Scottish people. But I'm pointing out today, it's actually a threat to English businesses as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's absolutely daft that a London Chancellor should be putting that forward, which is why, of course, he's bluffing. He won't put it forward the day after the referendum. Our position is we should share the asset of Sterling, the Bank of England, which was nationalised in 1946, uh, and also share the liabilities. And we put that forward in the white paper, form us of how we could service our share of that huge national debt that George Osborne and Alistair Darling have, have built up over the last few years. That is our position. But George Osborne says, no, no, we'll take control of the asset, that's the Bank of England, despite everything, uh, and incidentally, uh, you'll take uh, a share of the liabilities. Now, it doesn't work like that. You can have a share of assets and liabilities, our position in cooperation, or, or you can have George Osborne, because he's already admitted that legally the debt belongs to the UK. So the threat, as you put it, is not a threat from us, it's the logic of George Osborne's own position. And again, why would a London Chancellor put himself in a position uh, of uh, accepting that they're going to have to take all of the national debt if he pursues his grab for the Bank of England. It's a daft position. It's another reason why he's bluffing. And I think it's very important to spell out these things. In Scotland, there's already been a huge reaction uh, against the language and the, the nature of last week's speech. I think it's important to explain it to the people of the rest of the UK as well, how this Chancellor is acting against uh, the interests of businesses and the people of the rest of the United Kingdom.